Hello, I'm Atuba Judge and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, I was sharing something with you two days ago, and I was supposed to continue from there, but, you know, we digressed yesterday because there are some thoughts the Lord was bringing to my heart that were very, very important that I share with you. There's something I want you to understand. You know, because sometimes we, we can start going somewhere and then we digress a bit. I'll tell you why. You see, in the book of Isaiah, I think Isaiah 11, he said, precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. You see, that's God's principle of building and growth. So when we start and then the Lord sees that there is someone or there are people who need it, because before you can understand some things, you have to understand certain things, if you know what I'm talking about. So maybe we're going somewhere and the Lord says, okay, hold on here. Pick, go and take this line and add to it. See, take this precept and add to it so that there will be a flow. See, so not because we, we don't remember what we're talking about. We, we know that there are certain things that need to be added for the understanding to flow. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now then, remember where we are. At. Be mindful of his covenant. Now, I've been telling you that there are three covenants. Um, two covenants God had with Abraham and then one with, with Jesus. I mean, Jesus had it with us. And you remember that I told you, Melchizedek, when he had that covenant of tithing with Abraham, funny enough, that's, that's the one we've been on since. Listen, that's the biggest covenant, I'm telling you the truth. See, the covenant of circumcision was tied to the covenant of tithing. I'll explain this, I pray I explain this to you. Then even the covenant that Jesus did with with us by the breaking of bread is tied to the covenant god had with abraham this covenant of tithing god had with abraham see what was the covenant god had with abraham i pray you understand what i'm sharing with you today see this is the crux of the gospel I'm, I'm, see you know sometimes i look at these things i'm like lord we've been preaching i don't know what we've been preaching over the years I sincerely don't know what we've been preaching. But you see, as we approach the last days, and truly, believe me, Jesus is coming very soon. I mean, very soon. I'm going to be showing some things to you. And I pray your heart is open. I pray religion have not blinded your minds already. But if it has, I command that blindness to be taken away by the Spirit of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let your eyes be open to see and your heart be open to understand. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I said the, the covenant of Titan is the biggest covenant that God ever had with anyone. And, and he had that covenant with Abraham. And you know, when you hear tithing, people just think, oh, they want to collect your money. You don't get it. Tithing is more about God getting something to you than taking from you. I, uh, I explained to you that because of that covenant of tithing, I said because of that, God made a covenant of circumcision. This is circumcision tied them to the land so that they will be blessed. See, the covenant of Titan is that they will be blessed. See, when Melchizedek met Abraham, what did he say? Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. So the possessor of heaven and earth has come and he says, I bless you, Abraham. Okay, 
Are you understanding what I'm saying? So the possessor of heaven and earth blessed Abraham with what he possesses. And what's that? Heaven and earth. Okay. So the covenant of circumcision is now a covenant to marry them to the land. Follow me. That's why you cannot uproot the children of Israel from the land of Israel. You can't uproot them. No matter what you do, you can't uproot them. Because there is a covenant that marries them to that land. And I don't know if we have time to really delve into this. Uh, the covenant of circumcision. And then also the covenant of breaking of bread that Jesus had with the disciples. And which he gave that command that we should do this as on, we should do this often. That covenant is also to tie us to the covenant that God had with Abraham that he will take care of us and bless us. So if he gave Ayukuminifraiski, he told Abraham, he told Abraham, remember, he says, blessed be Abraham of the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. So God is the possessor of heaven and earth. And he's blessing Abraham with everything to prove how much he meant everything. He gave us his body to eat and his blood to drink. You know, someone says, I've given you, you know how, 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 you know, sometimes parents or leaders, they make statements like that. He said, what have I not given to you? Is it until you drink my blood that you will not have tried for you? What are you trying to say? I've given you everything, but God literally gave us his blood and his body. To do what? To strengthen that covenant of tithing. That was the first covenant God made with Abraham. It was because of that covenant Jesus gave the teaching. I'm just going to do a recap. Jesus gave the teaching that we should we should not care, or we should not worry, or we should not think about what to eat or clothes wet, what to put on. Why? Because that covenant brings us into the care of God. It's because of that covenant Jesus gave that teaching: sell what you have and give arms. It's because of that covenant. It's because of that covenant that you see the early church, the disciples, they were selling their land, selling their possessions and distributing to everybody who had need. What do you think they were doing? They were in covenant with God. They were functioning in that covenant. Now, no, the church doesn't preach that today. You, you, I mean, we, we read it on Tuesday. These people, as they believe in Jesus Christ, the first thing they do is they go sell their possessions and distribute and give to the poor. They bring it to the apostles. With, the apostles distribute it to everybody who have need in the church. And I know your question. So how were they surviving? You know, that's why I tell you, a lot of people who preach these things don't even understand what they are preaching. They don't. You see, Kama Supradishkata. Can you receive this? <laughs> Jesus said something in the book of Matthew. I want you to understand something. Because when what I speak to you about is not something I just picked up or I just read from somewhere. It's something I've been with the Lord years, over the years, following the Lord precept upon precept, line upon line concerning this thing, trying to trace these things and understand what the Spirit is saying. Until I got to this conclusion, I said, look, the biggest thing between man and God on the earth is tithing. It's tithing. Argue it the way you want to argue it. But I pray that you will give your heart to understanding. So here's Jesus speaking. Matthew. Matthew chapter 20. Let's, uh, he started teaching. He started talking about this thing from um, chapter 24. You remember when the disciples asked him, when shall these things be? And, you know, and then he began to talk to them about it. But I want to show you something. Now Jesus began to tell, because they said, what when shall these things be and what will be the sign of the let me read it chapter 24 book of matthew Barabaya 
Now verse 3, Matthew 24 verse 3. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, his disi the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Take note of this. What, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? When will this thing be? What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Very clear question. So we go to chapter 25 and Jesus began to speak. Now I want you to see, follow me from verse 31. Follow me carefully, please. Now he says, when the son of man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Please follow. When he comes, when he comes, he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them from one another. Take notes. Please take notes. He will separate them from one another as a shepherd divides his sh sheep from the goat. Okay. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goat on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, who are those on the right hand? The sheep, okay? Follow me. Come, you blessed of my father, those on his right. Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now, take note. This is Jesus speaking. This is not any, any apostle or anybody trying to repeat what Jesus said. This is Matthew wrote this thing from what he heard Jesus teach. Okay, so now he says, I'm going to, when I come, when, when, when I come, when the Son of Man come, and I love how Jesus didn't say, when I come. And I love how he was referring to this one as the third person. You will not understand why. But that's how the Godhead operates. And I told you, Jesus if you go to heaven today, you will not see one and they say, see Jesus. And then you see, he says, Jesus, let me follow you. Let me follow you to where you're staying. No, nothing of such. He shows up when he wants to show up to you. And I love, I love what I, uh, we don't have time to go into that. Maybe, maybe sometime later, the Lord will bring us to teach. You see this thing we're reading, these things Jesus taught, maybe sometime soon, the Lord will give us um, utterance to teach on this. Follow me now. He says, mm -hmm. so he says, I'm going to, when I sit down, all nations are going to come before me. Now, this is exactly what the Revelation spoke about. This is the end. This is the end. He said, all nations are going to come before me. And when they come before me, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to separate the sheep. I'm going to divide them into two, like a man who divides sheep from his goat. So the sheep will be on the right hand. The goat will be on the left hand. Okay. Now, what's that? Whosoever's name is written in the book of life. Those are the ones that are going to be on the right hand. And guess the dialogue or all the things Jesus said. Now, this thing struck me. Watch this now. He says, for now he says, verse, verse 34. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So there is a kingdom that was prepared for these people, for us whose names are in the book of life, from the foundation of the world. It's not, you know, you know, you know, say when you pay your tithe, when you bring your offerings, as you're bringing in, they will be building your house in heaven. No, sir. No, sir. Before Adam was created, before you were born, a, I command a kingdom was prepared for you before the foundation of the world. A kingdom, when God was creating things in Genesis 1, he created a kingdom for you. And that's all God has been saying from Adam. That's why he made covenant with Abraham. It's about the kingdom that was prepared, not just for Abraham, for all of us. That's why he said to Abraham, through you, 
all the families of the earth will be blessed. So now Jesus came, comes and says, so this division is going to happen. And then he says, and I'll say to the one, what was he say to the one? Hey, 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 I, you know, as I just saw that, then the king will say to the one, something just came. No, Holy Spirit, thank you. Praise <laughs> God. See, I told you Jesus was speaking in, 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 he was referring to another person. He was speaking to the third, in the third person singular. He says, then the king, this is Jesus speaking. He says, then the king. And he said, when the son of man comes, then the king. I said, that's another day stock. So he says, hey, there is a kingdom that was prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Come and inherit it. And look at what he said that qualified them for that. See, their names are in the book of life. Yes. You remember when Jesus sent out the disciples and they came back rejoicing. You remember what he said to them? He said, don't rejoice that demons are subject to you in my name. Rejoice rather that your name is written in heaven. And they were not born again yet. He didn't say rejoice rather that your name shall be written in heaven. No. He says rejoice rather that your name is written in heaven. Remember Judas Iscariot went out casting out devils with them. So they were all rejoicing and Jesus looked at all of them. I can just imagine Jesus looking at Judas to say, man, I've never seen this kind of thing. You remember that? Peter, you remember that demon? The demon was doing like, I just say, out! The demon just left the person. And Jesus was looking at them, looking at all of them. And I said, hey guys, let me tell you the truth. Don't be excited about this. The thing that should make you excited is that your name is written in heaven. Guess what Jesus now says next? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. He says, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Listen. He did not say, ah, please understand what I'm talking to you about now. He did not say you did not commit fornication. He did not say you did not steal. He did not say you did not lie. He did not say you did not do bear false witness and all those things. He never mentioned any of those. What did he say? Now, now, I know people have read this and say, ah, I better start doing good though. Every beggar I see, I give them money because I don't know. Ah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You see, please notice what he said. Ah, let's, let's, let's try and finish this because of time. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and gave you food? When did we see you a stranger and took you in or naked and clothed you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and came to you? And the king will answer and say to them, as surely I say to you, in as much as you did eat to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did eat to me. Oh, hold on. Then he will also say to those on his left hand, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire. I told you, he is coming back to fulfill the second part of his ministry. And the second part of his ministry is to baptize men with fire. And who's going to baptize with fire? Not the one on the right hand, the one on the left. I told you that's why he's coming back. He came back the first time to baptize with the Holy Ghost. Remember, John said it. He's coming to baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. But Jesus in his first coming, which he spent three and a half years, he did not baptize with fire. Yeah. 
Even when the disciples one time, the sons of thunder said, Lord, why don't we just call them fire? He said, don't try that. Said, you don't know what kind of spirits you are. Because that's not, he didn't come to fulfill. He, 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 he vehemently resisted, resisted their thoughts. Because that was not the time. But he's coming again. And that's very soon. And he's coming for this fire baptism. That's, that's what he said here. He says, then he will also say to those on his left hand, depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire. Are prepared for the devil and his angels. Who? It was prepared for the devil and his angels. But now he's sending men to it. Why? Ayakabush. Hmm. My time is up. <laughs> if you can understand these things I'm sharing with you, I, tr I listen, trust me, you are made for life. This is the call of the gospel. I pray the Lord give you understanding. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll see you tomorrow. Now we're going to continue from here. Bye.